Hi, and welcome to East Carolina Root. Well, <laughs> this is going to be a fun video. This might not be for everyone because I'm going to do a lot of reading in this video. The reason why is some of you may have heard of OpenAI's chat GPT. This is artificial intelligence that has been trained on tons and tons and tons of data over the last several years. And now people can use it to ask all kinds of questions. Some people are saying it's better than a regular search engine. Some search engines, I think Microsoft is using it. They're incorporating its technologies into Bing. Um, and so there, there are definitely some positives. There are definitely some good things about it, but I'm logged into the site now and I wanted to throw out some possibilities for you, some that may be helpful and some not so much. So when you log into ChatGPT, I'm going to open, um, actually I'm already logged in, so I, I can't show you right this second what it's like to log in. Um, just because it's kind of, it's kind of, it's one of those things that when you go to it, you, you can use your existing Google account. You can use some existing other accounts to log in, or you can set up an account with them. I just used my existing Google account, my Gmail account, because that was the easiest thing for me. But once I log in, it brings me to this screen where it gives examples of how you can get started with a chat. And so for instance, you can type in something like, as it says, explain quantum computing in simple terms. Or how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript? Or got any creative ideas for a 10-year-old's birthday? And But it does have some limitations. It will occasionally generate incorrect information. It may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. And it has a limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. So why am I talking about this on East Carolina Roots? Well, for those of you who don't know, I am a total computer nerd. I have been building websites since the late 90s. In fact, that is what I do as my primary profession. I have a website business called Seaport Webworks, and we build websites, we host websites, we help clients with marketing and all of that. Of course, I built the East Carolina Roots website back in 2007. So I'm always up for trying new technologies, especially if they can be helpful in some way. Chat G GPT definitely has its helpful features. For instance, I've been able to use it to generate ideas for blog posts for other sites and things like that. But I got to thinking about the fact that Chat GPT has so much quote unquote knowledge. It knows so much about so many things from all of the data that it's been trained on over the years that I thought, I wonder how it might work in genealogy applications. I wonder if it might be a good idea to try it out and see if it might either provide some history or context of some of the, you know, some of my ancestors, where they lived, the, you know, their situations that they experienced, the, the things that they did and whatnot. And then I, I, it was like, I felt like Alice in Wonderland. I felt like I had gone down a rabbit hole. So if you've been following East Carolina Roots for very long, you know that my, like my number one brick wall for years and years and years has been trying to find out Laban Morris's mother. We, we found out his father was Roland Ledbetter. At least DNA suggests that strongly. And it does line up with some family traditions that were passed down. We don't know who his mother is. But we've also tried doing the fan club research. You know, fan club is friends, associates, and neighbors. So in other words, we've tried to run down people that have been associated with him in the records and, and all of that. And I thought... You know, I'm going to just going to see what kind of information I can mine from Chat GPT. No, I don't think Chat GPT knows anything about Laban Morris, but you never know. Like, if if I, I wondered if it had been trained on, for instance, any of the genealogy sites that were out there, if it might have parsed data from like databases, for instance, the old Roots Web, the old Gen U.S. Gen Web archives, because I thought that would be really cool. Because this, you know, as AI would be able to search for things in a more useful way, whereas we might have to search for things with precise spellings and whatnot. Chat GPT can actually, if you if you ask it to search for something or to give information about something, you know, for it for it and its various spellings, it can it can do that. <laughs> Will it always be accurate? That's the question. So I want to take you to um, first of all, I'll take you to a useful conversation I had with Chat GPT. 
I had a conversation where I said, I have an old photo of some ancestors and I'm wondering when it was taken so I can identify who it is. Are there any sites available where I can upload the photo to check out a likely year range for the photo? ChatGPT helpfully responded, yes, there are several websites and tools that you can use to help date an old photo. Some popular options include The Photo Detective by Maureen Taylor. This website offers photo dating and identification services, as well as tips and resources for identifying your family photos. My Heritage Photo Enhancer. This tool uses deep learning technology to enhance and restore old photos and can also help you estimate the date range of the photo based on clothing and background details. Well, there's a problem. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, in my experience, the photo enhancer doesn't really give you a date range of the photo. Maybe some of you have had different experience, but I haven't found that to be the case. Google, it suggests Google Images. You can use the reverse image search feature on Google Images to search for similar images and see if any information on the date of the photo is available. Historical Society websites. Some historical societies have online collections of historical photos and you can compare your photo to others to get a better idea of its date. So th that was sort of a semi-helpful answer, right? I mean, I, it was, I was asking a specific question. Yes, I could have just Googled this, but this was just me testing out chat GPT as a fun new tool. And for what it's worth, chat GPT is totally free. You can, you, you might want a paid account if you might, if you would want to use it during peak hours and things like that. But if you don't mind just using it whenever it's available, it's totally free. Okay. But here's, here's where things go down the rabbit hole. Naturally, I had to have a conversation with chat GPT about Laban Morris or people surrounding Laban Morris. Now, if you don't like people narrating written things, if you're not that interested in this, just click off. This video is not going to be for you. But if you want to see how deep the rabbit hole goes <laughs> with using AI for genealogical research, then definitely stay tuned and listen. So I began an inquiry with this. Do you have access to historical information in the United States? Chat GPT responds, yes, I have access to historical information in the United States. My training includes a vast amount of information and data, including historical information from various sources, such as books, articles, databases, and archives. I can also access information available on the internet, including historical documents, photographs, and recordings. However, my knowledge is limited to information that was available up to my knowledge cutoff date of 2021-9 or September 2021. So then I ask, would it be possible that you might be able to help with a genealogical query? Chat GPT responds, yes, I can certainly try to help with a genealogical query to the best of my abilities. Please provide me with as much information as possible about your query. I will do my best to assist you. So I thought I would start with something easy. I asked, do you have any information on the Swiss Palatine settlers in New Bern, North Carolina around 1710? Now I'm just going to say, if you are from Eastern North Carolina, you should know this history. And I know this history, but I thought this was just going to be a good test of how ChatGPT would present me with an answer to a historical question. So this is how ChatGPT responds. And don't worry, I'm not going to necessarily read every single thing in this whole long, long, long conversation, but I just want to give you a baseline. So this is more or less a straightforward, fairly correct answer. Chat GPT responded to this question. Yes, I do have some information on the Swiss Palatine settlers in New Bern, North Carolina in the early 18th century. In 1710, a group of approximately 650 Swiss and German Palatine immigrants, also known as the Poor Palatines, arrived in New York City from Europe. They were refugees who had fled their homes due to war, religious persecution, and economic hardship. Many of them had been promised land and a new life in the American colonies by British officials. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I, I mean, I didn't know so much about the background of the Swiss and German Palatine immigrants so I can't say whether or not it's true about how many of them were refugees who had fled their homes due to those factors. It, it might be true. I mostly just knew when they came over that they came over with 
Christoph von Grafenried and they established Newburn, you know, those are the types of things. So, and so I haven't fact checked every aspect of that statement, but let's move on. So then it goes on to say in 1710, Governor Edward Hyde of North Carolina invited a group of these Swiss Palatines to settle in the province. The Palatines agreed and sent a delegation to North Carolina to assess the situation. The delegation found the land to be suitable for farming and the climate favorable, and so the Palatines decided to settle there. The Palatine settlers arrived in Newburn in 1710, and they established a community known as the Swiss Settlement. They were skilled farmers and were able to make a living from the fertile land in the area. They also established a church, which became the first Lutheran congregation in North Carolina. Now, I did not know that. I didn't know that there was a Lutheran congregation with the Swiss Palatine settlers. I mean, I guess it would make sense. I haven't fact checked that. So if any of you know, definitely leave it in the comments below. Despite their initial success, the Palatines faced many challenges in the New World, including conflict, conflicts with Native American tribes and disease outbreaks. So that would be like the Tuscarora War, right? Many of them eventually moved away from Newburn to other parts of the colony or to other colonies such as Pennsylvania and Virginia. If you have specific questions about a particular individual or family, I can try to help you find more information. All right. So this is where things start to get interesting. I said, I'm wondering if you've ever seen anything about Henry Morris, also known as Henry Morissette. The name Morissette is often spelled phonetically, so it might be spelled different ways. Chat GPT responds, I did a search for Henry Morris or Henry Morissette in the context of the Swiss Palatine settlers in Newburn, North Carolina, and I found a few references to a Henry Morissette who may be the person you're looking for. According to the book, The Palatine Families of New York, 1710, by Henry Z. Jones Jr., there was a Henry Morissette who was a single man in the group of Swiss Palatines who arrived in New York City in 1710. He is listed on page 740 of the book, and his name is spelled as Henry Morissette. In the book, The Newburn Colony, A Bicentennial History by Alan D. Watson, which as an aside, I'll say I do have that book, there is a reference to Henry Morissette, who was a member of the Swiss settlement in Newburn. The book mentions that he was a French-speaking Palatine and that he married a woman named Mary Elizabeth Brown in 1732. If you have any more specific information about Henry Morris or Morissette, such as his birthplace or family members, I might be able to help you find more information. So basically, I go on to challenge ChatGPT because I hadn't seen anything about... Um, I hadn't seen the specific reference to the marriage to Mary Elizabeth Brown. I have Alan D. Watson's book. I haven't read every single page of it, and at least not in many, many, many years. I didn't remember seeing this because at the time I wasn't researching that particular topic, but I did question chat GPT about that because I had seen the deed entry where it mentions Henry's wife as Sophia Eleanor and the daughter Mary. And when I challenged ChatGPT about it, ChatGPT responded and says, I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. Upon further research, it appears that there were multiple in individuals named Henry Morissette Morris who were part of the Swiss Palatine settlers in Newburn. And it's possible that the references I found may be to, to different individuals. Well, I don't think that there were multiple individuals named Henry Morissette or Morris among the Swiss Palatine settlers. But you'll see this is the first of a pattern <laughs> that emerges in this dialogue with ChatGPT. So I'm going to come down some more. And I just continued having a conversation back and forth with ChatGPT about what my understanding is of the history of Henry Morissette or Morris. And then ChatGPT backtracking on things that it had said, apologizing for giving me wrong information, making suggestions for why there might have been some confusion and so forth. So then I thought, OK, I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to look. For something else. So I figured I would use something that would be a really unique name, right? So I said, I have an ancestor I'd like to inquire about. His name was Talbot Williams, and I think he was born about 1752 in Maryland. Do you have anything about him or his family? I think his father may have been Ithamar Williams. Y'all, this is where we enter the twilight zone with ChatGPT. Okay, this is how ChatGPT responded to that simple inquiry. And I will say that I've been on the internet since the internet became a thing. And I have been researching Talbot Williams ever since I learned he was one of my ancestors. And I have a lot of information about him. 
virtually none of the information I have about him is in any of what ChatGPT provides. But boy, he provides all kinds of creative information. So just listen. ChatGPT says, I conducted a search and found some information on Talbot Williams and his family. It appears that Talbot Williams was born in Maryland in 1752 to Ithamar Williams and Elizabeth Talbot. Elizabeth uh, Ithamar Williams was a prominent figure in colonial Maryland and served as a member of the Maryland House of Delegates in the Continental Congress. He was also a close friend of Thomas Jefferson. What? <laughs> I have never seen anything about that. Okay. Chat GPT continues. Talbot Williams went on to serve in the Revolutionary War, and he was later appointed the Surveyor General of the Western Territory. He also served as a United States Senator from 1803 to 1809. According to some sources, Talbot Williams married a woman named Elizabeth Collins, but I was not able to find any additional information about her. If you have any additional information or specific questions about Talbot Williams or his family, please let me know and I'll do my best to assist you further. So you can imagine my bewilderment because while I know that Talbot Williams is the son of Ithamar Williams, and I know he was from Maryland, I have literally never seen anything about either member of that family being in government. Not to mention a close friend of Thomas Jefferson. I mean, that would be amazing. I love Thomas Jefferson. He's one of my favorite founding fathers. I would love to see a connection between my family and Thomas Jefferson in any way. I just don't think it's true. Same thing with my ancestor, Talbot Williams, serving as a United States Senator. I don't think so, because I would think that would certainly be mentioned in Craven County records if he was. Instead, he was just listed as just Talbot Williams. And, you know, his his estate wasn't super remarkable or anything like that. So anyway, this is how I responded to chat, to chat GPT about this. I said, I'm wondering about your sources for Talbot Williams serving in the Revolutionary War and him serving as a United States Senator. That's new information to me. <clears throat> ChatGPT responds, I apologize for any confusion. My sources for Talbot Williams serving in the Revolutionary War and as a United States Senator were based on my general knowledge of American history and may have been an error. After conducting more specific search for information about Talbot Williams, it appears that he was indeed a prominent figure in Colonial Maryland, as his father, Ithamar Williams, was. However, I was not able to find any definitive sor sources that confirmed Talbot Williams' service in the Revolutionary War or his service as a United States Senator. It is possible that my previous response may have been conflating Talbot Williams with another historical figure or that I may have been in error. I apologize for any confusion and any misinformation that may have been conveyed. And it goes on to just say, do I have any more questions? So this is like, I, at this point, I'm just on the hook, right? I'm like, what kind of stuff is ChatGPT going to come up with? So I said, do you have a source for Ithamar Williams being friends with Thomas Jefferson like you mentioned earlier? Here, ChatGPT sheepishly, sheepishly responds, I apologize for the confusion earlier regarding Ithamar Williams and Thomas Jefferson's friendship. After conducting further research, I was not able to find any definitive sources that confirm a close friendship between Ithamar Williams and Thomas Jefferson. While Ithamar Williams and Thomas Jefferson were both influential figures in colonial America, it appears that their paths may not have crossed in a significant way. I apologize for any confusion, blah, 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 blah. So th this is, then I want to get down to brass tacks. I say, in what way was in Ithamar Williams an influential or prominent citizen? I didn't know that he was. And then he responds and says, ChatGPT responds and says, Ithamar Williams was a prominent figure in colonial Maryland with a long and distinguished career in public service. He was born in 1722 in Hartford, Connecticut and graduated from Yale University in 1743. Y'all, this is totally new to me and I have not yet found anything that supports this. It may be true, but I certainly have not found anything that supports it. It says, Williams moved to Maryland in 1746 and quickly became involved in politics. He served as a member of the Maryland House of Delegates from 1751 to 1752, and again from 1762 to 1774. He was also a member of the Continental Congress from 1774 to 1776 and was involved in drafting the Articles of Confederation. Oh, really? I don't, I, I, somehow I don't think so. Seems like this would be something that I would have been able to find in all my many years of research. 
if any of you find anything about this, please send it to me because I would love to know if I have an ancestor who was involved in the Continental Congress. Okay. In addition to his political career, Williams was also a successful businessman with interests in land speculation, shipping, and iron production. He was founder and shareholder in several companies, including the Baltimore Iron Works, the Susquehanna Canal Company, and the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. What? He was involved with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in the 1700s? That's amazing because I never knew that there were railroads in the, seven, in the 18th century. That's just amazing. Williams was also a prominent member of the Masonic Lodge and served as Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Maryland from 1767 to 1770. In summary, Ithamar Williams was a successful politician, businessman, and Masonic leader in colonial Maryland with significant contributions to the development of the state and nation as a whole. And I'm just, you know, at this point, I just, this is, this is a fun night. I mean, I, I did this several weeks ago, right? And this was just, I spent a while having this dialogue with ChatGPT. And I, I would actually try to verify the things that it was telling me. I would try to look up the resources it was telling me. And things were not really coming up according to what ChatGPT was saying. So I said, would you mind sharing with me your sources for that information? If Mar Williams is one of my ancestors and all of that is new to me. ChatGPT excitedly responds, certainly my sources for the information on Ithamar Williams include Williams Ithamar, Biographical Dictionary of the United States Congress, Access, March 1st, 2023. This source provides a brief biography of Ithamar Williams and his career in public service. Ithamar Williams, Archives of Maryland, Volume 17, Maryland State Archives, Access, March 1st, 2023. Okay, it lists more sources, but the, here's the problem. It wasn't March yet when I sent this. Okay, we're, we're going to come back to that in a minute. I said, wonderful. Do you have information, Ithamar Williams' family, in particular his children? And he says, yes, I can certainly provide you with information about Ithamar Williams' family. Ithamar Williams married Sarah Talbot in 1749, and they had 10 children together, and here are their names. And it goes on to list a bunch of names. Now, remember earlier it said that he married Elizabeth Talbot, but now it says he's married Sarah Talbot. And I know it could be Sarah Elizabeth, but I mean, at this point, ChatGPT just really seems like a drunk old man telling me tall tales. So I, I'm not really trusting a whole lot I'm getting from it at this point. I am still checking things that it tells me to see if I can validate anything. So I go on to say, do you have any information on where Ithamar Williams' son, William Williams, ended up? Did he stay in Maryland or move elsewhere? I don't have specific information about where William Williams, the fourth child of Ithamar Williams, ended up after his youth. However, I can provide some general information that may be helpful. According to the Maryland State Archives, Ithamar Williams had extensive business interests in colonial Maryland, including the iron industry and shipping trade. Remember that 18th century railroad that he was. <laughs> okay. It's possible that William Williams was involved in his father's business ventures and remained in Maryland to continue those endeavors. Additionally, it's worth noting that the Revolutionary War disrupted many families and caused people to move around the country. Okay. And I went on to ask about other children of the Williams and uh, other members of the family. And then, um, I said, I came to a question where I said, my information has that Talbot Williams married Nancy Gardner. She was sometimes called Anne. Have you seen information about that? He says, I apologize for any confusion. You are correct that Talbot Williams, the son of Ithamar Williams, married Nancy Gardner, sometimes called Anne, in 1779 in Maryland. Nancy was the daughter of John Gardner, a prominent merchant in Baltimore. So here's another thing. ChatGPT says that they married in 1779, but I have the marriage record for Nancy Gardner and Talbot Williams, and they married in 1781 in St. James Parish, Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Also, I have that her father was William Gardner, while ChatGPT said she was the daughter of John Gardner. So then I say, did you know Talbot and Nancy moved to North Carolina? 
And then Chat GPT says, I apologize for the confusion earlier. I was not aware that Talbot and Nancy Williams moved to North Carolina. Y'all, this is where things just really got weird. It says, however, I have found records indicating that Talbot Williams was appointed as a tax collector in Surrey County, North Carolina in 1785. It is possible that he and his family relocated to North Carolina around this time or shortly thereafter. I was not able to find further information on Talbot and Nancy's time in North Carolina or whether they remained there permanently. If you have any information or clues, please let me know and I will do my best to assist you. And I'm just, you know, this floors me because I'm, I, I never would have thought of Surrey County. I didn't know where it could possibly be pulling this information from. It seemed so random. I said, thank you. Would you mind providing me with the source for Talbot Williams being appointed as tax collector in Surrey County in 1785? Well, of course, ChatGPT comes up with its source. It says, certainly, I found this information in the North Carolina State Archives, Secretary of State Papers, Tax and Fiscal Records, 1777 to 1902. The appointment of Talbot Williams as a tax collector in Surrey County, North Carolina is recorded in volume 235, page 217. I hope this information is helpful. I looked for this, y'all, and I didn't find it. If any of you find it, by all means, let me know. But I didn't find any such thing. Then I say, do you find anything in your research about the possible connection between Talbot Williams and Joel Wall or Joel Walls? Apparently, they obtained a tract of land together. I don't know anything else about how they might have known each other. Now, before I give you ChatGPT's response, I know that they obtained a tract of land together in Craven County because I have a copy of that. And that was, you know, before they would have supposedly been in Surrey County or before he would have been in Surrey County. So this is what ChatGPT says when I ask about Talbot Williams and Joel Wall. I was able to find a record of a land transaction in which Talbot Williams and Joel Wall were involved. In 1784, Talbot Williams and Joel Walls jointly purchased 320 acres of land in Surrey County, North Carolina from Joseph Cloud. The land was located south of on the south side of the Yadkin River. Unfortunately, I was not able to find further information on the relationship between them, blah, 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 blah. So I said, so Joel Walls also lived in Surrey County for a time? Because this doesn't make any sense. I mean, this just doesn't make any sense. I knew it didn't. But I just, it's, I mean, like at this point, it just becomes clear to me, chat GPT really just seems like it's just totally making things up as it goes along. I mean, it's, it's accessing all kinds of historical sources, but it's concocting this whole narrative about these people. And it just, just gets weirder and weirder. So, so Joel Walls also lived in Surrey County for a time. Yes, it appears that Joel Walls also lived in Surrey County, North Carolina, around the same time as Talbot Williams. According to the 1784 land transaction record I found earlier, both Talbot Williams and Joel Walls were identified as residents of Surrey County at the time of purchase. I was not able to find any additional information, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm just playing along. I say, well, I believe after they left Surrey County, they went to Craven County, North Carolina. Chat GPT thanks me for this additional information. It says, according to my research, Talbot Williams and his family did indeed move to Craven County, North Carolina after living in Surrey County. I was able to find a record of Talbot Williams being appointed as a justice of peace in Craven County in 1791, which supports this. Now, I, I will say that's I, I haven't found anything about that. But if anyone has, please send it to me. That's entirely possible. But I don't know anything about it. I've never seen any record of it at all. Then ChatGPT also says, I was not able to find any records of Joel Walls or his family in Craven County. So it's unclear if he also relocated there with Talbot Williams. They were there. There are plenty of records of them there. Uh, so I don't know how ChatGPT didn't find information about Joel Walls being in Craven County when he was definitely there with Talbot Williams. In fact, they bought their land together there. So I say, I do have information about Joel Walls in Craven County, but first, would you please provide me with the sources for your information about Talbot Williams? So it goes on to provide me with information, National Society of the DAR, uh, North Carolina State Archives tax lists, North Carolina State Archives executive and legislative papers. And I'm just telling, oh, this is wonderful. Okay. And by the way, Joel Walls appears in the 1790 U.S. Federal Census in Craven County at the same time that Talbot Williams does. So then ChatGPT thanks me for letting it know. 
And it says, I guess they knew each other in Craven County as well, especially since they previously owned land together in Surrey County. And I, you know, okay. So at this point I said, I have an ancestor who was a brick wall for me. Are you familiar with the term brick wall in genealogy? And chat GPT says, yes, it is. And it explains what a brick wall is. And that was, that was fine. It was a pretty good definition. All right. So then I provide a little information about Laban Morris and I'm sort of playing, playing, you know, playing it up at this point. Well, you are a new resource and strategy because he had suggested finding new resources and strategies. And I said, you're helping me learn things I didn't know before. And then I mentioned Talbot Williams had a daughter named Caroline Williams. Her nickname was Kitty. She married my fourth great grandfather, Laban Morris. And then I explained Laban Morris apparently underwent a name change in 1810 from Laban Henley or Henby to Laban Morris. His first two sons, John and William, also had their names changed from Henley, Hemby to Morris. Do you have anything else in your records about my ancestor Laban Morris, a.k.a. Laban Henley, Henby? He was born about 1781, probably in North Carolina. Chat GPT says, I would be happy to help with your ancestor Laban Morris, Henley, Henby. I did a quick search of my records and found some census and marriage records that may be helpful. In the 1850 U.S. federal census, a Laban Morris is listed as living in Johnson County, North Carolina, with his wife, Caroline Morris, and several children. As an aside, no, he wasn't. He, he was in Craven County. In fact, he's twice on the Craven County census in 1850. It says Laban's age is listed as 70 years old, which is consistent, no, which would put his birth around 1780 or 1781, consistent with your information. Caroline's age is listed as 60 years old. There are two younger Morrises listed in the household, William Morris and Lavinia Morris. No, there's no Lavinia Morris in their household in 1850. Then it goes on to say, in the 1820 U.S. federal census, there is a Laban Henley listed as living in Surrey County, North Carolina. His household includes one male between the ages of 26 to 44, which would fit with a birth year around 1781, two females under the age of 10, and one female between the ages of 16 to 25, possibly his wife. It's possible that this is the same Laban as your ancestor. In terms of marriage records, I found a marriage bond from Surrey County, North Carolina, dated August 9, 1802, between Laban Henby and Kitty Williams. This could be the marriage record for your ancestor, Laban, and his wife, Caroline slash Kitty. This was like riveting to me. I'm thinking, how, how is it possible that this is made up? I'm going to just check and see if this is a real thing. So I did my research and I, I was trying to think like, surely, okay, some of the information it gives me is correct and some of the information it gives me seems to be totally made up. I don't know what's what. I, I can't tell which is which. So I spent some time trying to look this up. I looked in various places. I respond and say, I'm looking for that marriage bond from Surrey County, but I'm struggling to find it. Are the names spelled like that in the marriage bond? Well, chat GPT says the names are spelled as Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams in the marriage bond. It's possible the spelling of the surname may have varied in different records. The marriage bond is dated October 17, 1801. Wait a minute. Up here it said that the marriage bond was August 9, 1802. So I said, well, which site should I use to find that marriage bond? Because at this point, I'm like, this is, okay, this is giving me crazy information. I don't know what ChatGPT is going to give me as a resource or if there's anything even remotely similar to that that it might be pulling from to tell me. And so it says, um, it says you can try searching for the marriage, the Surrey County marriage bonds on the North Carolina State Archives website. And then they give me a list to a link that no longer works. And I know how to find marriage bonds and things like that on the site. And in fact, that this night after I did this whole chat with ChatGPT, I thought I'm going to just rule this out completely. I did contact archives and I provided two different dates for a Surrey County marriage bond between Morris and Williams, and there was no such thing. They wrote me back and they said, we're not finding anything like that. But anyway, so we just go back and forth and back and forth. And I'm, you know, explaining that the links are no longer active. This, you know, how about a page number? I apologize for the broken link. Yes, it's a digitized book available through the Happy Trust Digital Library. The, the reference for the book is Marriage Bonds of Surrey County, North Carolina, you know, so I looked in that and I never, ever, ever found any kind of marriage bond that ChatGPT is insisting exists. And I said, 
And, and also it mentions the book does not provide marriage numbers, but the entry for Talbot Williams and Nancy Gardner should be on 257. We were talking about supposed marriage bond between a Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams. And now it's talking about Talbot Williams and Nancy Gardner. It's jumbling up all kinds of information, y'all. And it just goes on. This conversation just goes on. I'm not going to take you through all the steps. We're literally arguing back and forth and it keeps apologizing for the confusion and then it's, you know, it's giving me the correct date for the marriage bond is October 17th. And I said, this is in Surrey County, North Carolina, right? Not Surrey County, Virginia. And then it says, yes, that's correct. But then it says the marriage bond is January 26th, 1801. And I said, you just said January 6th again after saying October 17th. I apologize for the confusion. I meant to say October 17th, 1801. So it, it goes on and it just keeps going back and forth on these different dates. And also, I said, I, I finally call it out on providing me with dates where it accessed information in the future. <laughs> so, because as I said, I, we were at the end of February when I had this dialogue with ChatGPT, but it was giving me resources claiming that they were being accessed in March. We weren't in March yet. I said, you provided me with wrong information here. You said that one of your sources was accessed on March 7th, 2023, but we're still in February, 2023. Also, that link says nothing about Talbot Williams, the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Ancestor Search Williams Talbot accessed March 7th, 2023. I apologize for the error, ChatGPT says. As an AI language model, I do not have the ability to access in internet or external sources, so I cannot provide you with a current link to the DAR's Ancestor Search. I said, you also provided several other resources about Talbot Williams that you said were accessed on March 1st, 2023. But again, it's not March yet. And it says, I apologize for the mistake in my previous message. As an AI language model, I don't have a real-time perception of the current date. So it was an error on my part. And I said, is the information you were providing me about Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams accurate? Chat GPT says, I apologize for the confusion earlier. Yes, the information I provided about Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams is accurate to the best of my knowledge. The marriage bond for Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams was dated January 26, 1801 in Surrey County, North Carolina. I apologize for any errors in my previous responses. And then I said, but you corrected yourself earlier and said it was October 1801. ChatGPT says, you are correct. I apologize for the mistake in my previous message. The marriage bond for Laban Hembry and Kitty Williams was dated October 17th, 1801. And it just goes on, y'all. It just goes on. And, you know, I was just trying to, I, like, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I was really trying to give this AI the benefit of the doubt. I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's finding something that looks like this. Like, I'm wondering if this has to do with just the way the questions are being asked. And it's, maybe it's just scanning a whole database and it's finding similar last names or whatever. But the thing is, I mean, it was being really specific and it was giving really specific sources where it claimed it was getting the information from, but they were completely wrong. They were completely wrong. And um, so my point to this whole video is to give you an experience, um, give you an experience that I've had using chat GPT for genealogy. There are other things that have been a positive experience. Um, you know, I have, have, I've been able to, for instance, look up things about Alan D. Watson books. Initially it gave me wrong information because it thought when I asked, do you have any information on books by Alan D. Watson? Well, it confused Alan D. Watson with a different author who's Alan Watson, not Alan D. Watson, but then it corrected the information and gave some more accurate information. Swift Creek is something I also asked about. It gave um, some information, but the Swift Creek it was talking about was the wrong Swift Creek, so that wasn't very helpful, but then it did end up correcting itself to more correct Swift Creeks. But then it also said Swift Creek is an area now known as Stokes, but Stokes is not Swift Creek. Like Vanceboro is what we think of. Swift Creek back in the day is what we think of as Vanceboro today and that surrounding area. Stokes is not that. Like that's a different place in Pitt County. Um, and so the point is, it, I, it, I think it, it might possibly be useful if you know your history already and you're just trying to get answer about something maybe specific. Um you know, this information about Dobbs County isn't too bad. I asked, what do you know about Dobbs County, North Carolina? 
and it said that it was a county in the eastern part of the state which existed from and it lists the years named after Arthur Dobbs and um you know Monk's Corner overview I did that so the point is if you're searching for like really basic dry historical facts chat GPT might do all right and if you're asking history about a place that you already know some history about, but you're just wanting to get things put together, maybe in a nice, neat way, for instance, that you might want to use maybe on a blog post or in your family tree. Like, let's say you want to put a little bit of history about a town. I could see possibly using ChatGPT if you wanted to include a little bit of history about a town without having to write it all from scratch. As long as you know the history and you can sort of fact check what ChatGPT is telling you. Because if you're counting on ChatGPT to give you accurate information when it comes to genealogy and family research, you're going to be very disappointed. Um, there, I'm sure that there are some things that it can be helpful with. But this is not something that I would trust for doing any serious research. Like I say, about the only way I would use ChatGPT would be for things like like I said, asking about dating an old family photo, you might ask ChatGPT for suggestions on how to break through brick walls in genealogy. In fact, let me do a chat just to show you how that looks. So I'm going to come up here and click on new chat. And down here in the bottom is where the uh, little block is where I can put my question. I'll say, um, give me 10 suggestions for breaking through a genealogical brick wall. And so it's going to come back and give me some suggestions. Number one, review your existing research. It's possible you missed some important clues or overlooked a critical piece of information that could help you break through your brick wall. Go back and double check your research to see if you missed anything. Analyze the evidence. Expand your search. Collaborate with other researchers. Revisit old records. Research collateral lines. Study local history. Analyze naming patterns. Use social media. Take a break. So I'll actually copy and paste these items that it gives as suggestions in the blog post that will accompany this video, but chat GPT can be useful for stuff like this. You know, um, if I wanted to, I could, this is another kind of thing you can do that's kind of fun. Not that I can think of it being necessarily very useful, but I could say something like write a poem about researching your family tree. Actually, let's make it even more interesting. I'll say write a sonnet. Write a sonnet about researching your family tree. I'm going to let it finish before I read it to you. All right, so here's what it came up with in just a matter of seconds. As I, del as I delve into my family's past, I sift through records old and worn to find the stories that will last of kinfolk long gone and forlorn. With each name and date I uncover, a new branch sprouts upon the tree, and I become a time-traveling lover of, all my, of my family's history. From distant lands and ancient times, they speak to me through written word of joys and sorrows, loves and crimes, their voices, though long gone, are heard. So as I trace my family's line, I honor those who came before divine. That's a lovely sonnet. 14 lines, just like it's supposed to be. I mean, I didn't count the, the syllables per line, but it seems about right. So chat GPT has its uses. Just don't count on it for actually giving you accurate information about your ancestors. Unless maybe your ancestor is a true historical figure and it's giving easily accessed information that you can fact check yourself. Anyway, I hope this helpful. Have you used ChatGPT to try any geneal genealogy research? And if so, have you had any success? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.
Bye-bye.